Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and I'm very excited to introduce the topic of the video today. It is the reawakened Final Fantasy IX banner. I'm very excited about this for a few reasons, and I'm gonna get right to those. So, if we go to the notices here, you can see there's been quite a few that are talking about the Final Fantasy IX crossover reawakened event, a resonant waltz. Very excited about that because to me, this was possibly the most fun battle that I've seen in this game to date. And so coming back, I'm, I'm excited again to kind of relive it a little bit. And I'm also really happy that they've decided to add a five star fire materia to the rewards. That's something that we haven't seen thus far. And I think that, that is really cool. I hope we get to see more of that in the future. But um, coming up here to this draw, one of the things that I really want to talk about is when these first came out, we were not sure. We were told we probably never see these again or may never see these again. But, you know, the implication was this is the only time you're going to get to pull on these. And so this was the first banner, I think, that I went legitimately hard on. I spent almost all, I think, all of my crystals while it was going on. And ultimately, there were three of these banners. But the very first one was my personal favorite, and that is the one that's featured right now with Zidane's sword for Cloud, Amaranth's claws for Tifa, and then their respective outfits. But what they have done is they have actually increased the abilities, and this is the first time in the game that they have increased the abilities on existing outfits and weapons. That's exciting because it's keeping stuff relevant that we, you know, spent a lot of hard-earned crystals for. And it's also exciting to me because these outfits, these weapons, just kind of hold a special place to me. And what I like about it is it gives people who started the game after this happened a chance to try to pull for these. And it gives the people like myself who were around and pulled hard a reason to be able to continue to use them. I think that's great all the way around. And I think the crux of this video is going to be trying to help uh, newer players or players who at least started after this, because this is the first crossover event that they did, the first limited banner that they did. It came out, you know, even before the six month anniversary and trying to help players decide whether or not this stuff is worth it to pull on, even with the buffs and everything else that we've gotten to these items uh, in lieu of the one year anniversary coming up. So, I will start out looking at these uh, two outfits that both got buffs, because before, you can see they've scratched it out just so there's no confusion on what was updated. Uh, used to be boost HP plus 10 for Zidane's outfit, and the second our ability on that outfit was uh, boosting physical ability damage when attack stance was maxed, and it used to be 10 points. Now, later on, we started getting... Um, physical ability mastery outfits, which I think are nearly hands down better as far as an R ability because it doesn't, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you've already maxed the physical ability potency, those just go on top of it. These do not. They actually add to the R ability, uh, like that you would be putting on with weapons, for example. But, uh, a five point boost, it's, it's something, okay? Five point boost to HP, also something. And I think 15 point boost to HP and physical ability potency, it's quite high. Does it make them as good as a lot of the outfits we're seeing now? Probably not, uh, or at least I don't think so. However, uh, maybe you like the look of it, etc., or maybe you're pulling on the banner for the weapons and you get one of these. It's better than it, they were. They're better than they were before. Tifa's got the same exact R abilities. And she got, therefore, the same exact updates. So she, uh, again, got 15 instead of 10, 15 instead of 10. I think that that's perfectly fine. I'm using uh, this notice here to show these because I have both of these, but it doesn't show you when you pull up your own outfit that it's better. It just shows the new, um, the updated version. So now it's just plus 15, plus 15. And so I like these because they show the scratch out. So you can know, especially, you know, if you weren't around before, exactly what you're getting there. Um, coming over to the actual banner itself, you can see here it's the crossover banner. There are now still two outfits you can pull for and they're guaranteed in the 12th slot here. 
Obviously, I have them both, so I can't get them. It's just Mithril Ore, and I wish you could select a weapon, but you can't. Um, but there are three weapons that are featured on this banner. Obviously, the only problem with three weapons is it's a little bit less chance on each of them. If you go to the details and odds, you can see, right, each one of them has a 1%, whereas, you know, obviously, if there were less, ultimately, there's a little bit higher percentage because the pool is going to be smaller on the feature. But uh, let's go ahead and actually look at what these weapons do. I'm going to start with Beatrix Sword because that's the brand new one and, you know, everybody uh, is seeing this for the first time, so it just feels like a good place to begin. So, it's called Beatrix Sword. The C ability is called Gale Slash. It is clearly a wind weapon, and I think that that's good for Zack. I think it's something he can use. His previous wind weapon is not the greatest, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, looking here, 520% right out of the gate, and if there's a debuff to the target, you're looking at an additional 1.2 times damage. And so, I would say, starting off, you're looking at 624. That's quite high. Uh, physical attack and wind potency, I mean, that all kind of makes sense. Just really quickly popping over here, I think this is all just fine. I like that there's a sigil boost on it. Going up to, uh, let's say, OB6, you're looking at 780, and again, assuming that you can get a debuff on the boss, which some are harder than others, but I think most bosses you can, you're looking at 936%. That is quite high. And then here, this is what kind of gets me excited. There's two things like by, that are, they become very, very um, noticeable by the time you get them to OB10. So the first one, obviously, is the C ability, and 940 times 1.2, you're looking at that 1128% physical wind damage. This is what I was really hoping uh, Sephiroth would get for his Earth weapon, instead of getting the, you know, lower percentage with the, the debuff, or the breach, whatever you, however you want to refer to it. This is what I was hoping for. I like this big hitting weapon when I already have other people that can breach, so, I'm very, very uh, satisfied with this. I'm also very satisfied with the R abilities here. Notice that Wind Potency is the primary R ability, or at least the one that goes higher. And 52 points at OB10 is very high. I like that a lot. I think this weapon is very good. Zack is by no means one of my main characters, so I'll just go ahead and tell you, it's not something that I'm gonna be going with for him, but that that's not because it's not good. It's just the way my account is working right now. I've kind of been focusing on Sephiroth for physical wind damage. Although, Zack would probably be able to do it better based on this. Um, so, you know, just kind of do, do the balancing act. Do the, the math for your account. Now, I do have a card to show, courtesy of Tom Rom, the expert. Uh, he has made this Beatrix Sword card, and it shows what it looks like from OB0 to OB1. And as usual, I mostly focus on the C ability for these. I think that's, you know, on a on a DPS weapon, that is the, the biggest benefit that you're going to look for with only, you know, one star upgrade. And so 620% is an extra 100% damage. However, when you multiply it by 1.2, that's 744%. So basically at OB1, it's better than any elemental weapon that came out for the first, I don't know, X amount of months that the game was was out, and that's a pretty big deal. And when you look at it um, compared to the first one, it's actually another 120% damage, not just 100 when you take the multiplier into account. So that is quite a bit, especially because if you're using it for the wind damage, you're also getting the times two multiplier for the weakness. So this is a huge deal, and it'll make a big difference in the amount of damage output you get. Down here, our abilities, boost attack goes up a little bit. Boost wind potency, actually four points. That's not bad for OB, five star to OB1. I like that a lot. So this weapon, I, I think it uh, gets a thumbs up from me. I, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty excited about it, even though I don't plan to pull for it at the moment. The next thing I wanna show you is a card that Tom Rom put together. I did this for the first time in my last banner review, and it's the uh, outfit combination review where Tom Rom has put together, you know, basically just an outfit, a main hand weapon and an off hand weapon, uh, shows what those are and shows kind of an example of what the stats would look like. So here you can see 
He's got the holiday suit on. That's what's depicted here, which is my favorite outfit for Zack, even though I don't own it. Uh, it came out at the end of the year uh, last year. So, you know, I guess at this point, just about eight and a half or so months ago. Uh, main hand, he's got the new weapon. And then offhand, he's got Cutlass. This is good for boost physical attack 31, win potency 52. Uh, you know, you can kind of just take a look at these and see what you'd be getting. Um, the destructive swipe is pretty good because it gives the physical defense down. So the main reason in this combination why he's using Cutlass, I would imagine, is because the physical defense down uh, with a potency of high. Now he's got this. These are both at max. OK, so take that into consideration as well. This is if both of these weapons were OB 10. Uh, but, you know, you you basically have the combo of lowering physical defense and then hitting him with a physical win damage move. And honestly, you can look at it as a pro or a con, but I think from the optimistic side of things, uh, Zach does not yet have a Wind Arcanum or a Wind Mastery that I can think of. And so here, we're using uh, Holiday Suit because it boosts the ability potency or physical ability. I'm not sure. I think it's actually physical ability and HP. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's not a Wind Mastery, okay? So... You know, he is going to be relying on this higher percentage to do as much damage as somebody like Sephiroth, who has lower percentage C abilities, but is going to have a mastery or somebody else, you know, who may have an Arcanum. So take that into consideration, but just know that, like, you know, you can use it with a lot of different outfits here and maybe he gets a wind Arcanum or mastery in the future. And that would make him hit really, really hard with wind. And now we get to the part that I'm most eager to analyze and discuss. And that is whether or not it's worth it for somebody who missed these weapons the first time to pull for Cloud and Tifa's weapons. So we'll go ahead and look first at Zidane's sword. And when this came out, this weapon was amazing. I didn't get a whole lot of copies of it. And I would absolutely have wanted to get more if I could have. But then before long, guide gloves for Tifa came out and it, they were just better. So... Ultimately, I do think that Guide Gloves are better than this, but it's a different character. And if you main Cloud or want to be able to have a second person to do physical uh, non-elemental damage, this weapon hits really hard. It's got plus 46 attack, plus 39 physical ability potency. Those aren't extremely impressive. It does have a sigil boost here for triangle. That's perfectly great. Um, but then here, we're looking at 1300%. And... That is a lot of damage, even by the current best weapon standard. I mean, that's a solid amount of damage. If you compare them here to Tifa's Guide Gloves, those do the same amount of physical damage. So for C ability's sake, they are the same. The only thing that I think makes these better, it's actually two things. One's a little bit more minor. But for one, I like that the physical ability potency is higher. You know, not by a whole lot, but it does kind of matter, especially when you're putting these on in your main slot. It makes it that much easier to max physical ability potency, which is probably the number one thing that you want to max when you're using a weapon like this. Also, I like the fact that it's got this fire boost on it. It doesn't hurt anything, right? I mean, she's still got the sigil boost here, but then the fact that she can also equip an elemental, you know, materia and get a 30% bonus to it. We're, you know, we're talking about, uh, uh, you know, weapons that have identical C abilities. So you got to kind of look at the rest of, you know, what the kit is to really be able to accurately compare them. However, at the end of the day, I do still think that this is a very good weapon. And let's be honest, being able to do non-elemental damage at the times you need it, it's really good. And it's almost never not good, right? I mean, as long as the enemy isn't particularly strong to physical attacks or something like that, uh, you know, if you have a weakness in an element, a weapon like this can really make up a large portion of that difference. So uh, this is kind of an account by account thing. However, if you were around for guide gloves, <sighs> I don't think I would be willing to try to pick this up like or pull on this banner just for picking up this weapon. For one, you know, you're probably going to want it to be at least OB6, where you can see that 1,000 plus, 1,100 plus percentage damage. Um, that's a pretty big deal as well. That's where my guide gloves currently are. My Zidane sword is not OB6. 
And I've done just fine without it because I have the guide gloves. And I think, man, with the one year anniversary coming up, I just can't imagine that the next weapon that does something similar to this won't have something better. Whether it's better R abilities, whether it's a second part of the C ability, something along those lines that might make it better. So I do think that this is very narrow um, or should be narrowly sought after, right? I think you got to really look at your account. Look at how many crystals you have uh, and, and think really hard before you pull for this particular weapon. On to Tifa's weapon, the Amaranth Claws. Now, these became way better, in my opinion. Uh, from the beginning, I think most people would say that Cloud Zidane's sword was better than Amaranth's claws, but I don't think anybody would have said that Amaranth's claws weren't great. Uh, it was, to my, I'm trying to think, I think it was one of the very first weapons, though, that had a pretty solid physical non-elemental damage to it, or any sort of damaging C ability, along with a self-physical attack increase. And starting at OB6, it was potency high on the first cast. 630% damage isn't the worst, and at the time, it was actually quite good, along with high potency attack increase. I went after these, I got them, I've used them a lot. In fact, I was using them as often as possible in Tifa physical builds until um, Kimura Wan came out for Aerith, because now, I can give my whole party that buff. And so Kamura Wand, if you got that, especially if you got it at OB6, it really shut down the need for Amaranth's Claws. Although they are still a good sub weapon because on a physical damage dealer, the fact that they've got some boost ability, a physical ability potency, which is what you would want, um, especially if you've kind of maxed other R abilities or you, you know, can't get them any higher. But then the extra 40 HP here at OB6 that's kind of still a big deal. And so these actually, I think, still make a great sub weapon, even if you're not actually needing the C ability anymore. So for that, I'm, I'm pretty big on it. They don't have a sigil break. And so that's, you know, kind of one of the reasons that like, you're pretty much using this just for utility. And that's where these got way better because they've added a whole nother section to the C ability. If your HP is 50% or more, which I think a 50% HP threshold is much easier to obtain or keep than a 70% one like Kamura Wand requires, uh, magic attack is decreased and they start out one copy mid potency. So you're buffing your own physical attack at mid potency, you're debuffing the enemy's magic attack at mid potency and doing, you know, for a five star weapon, this is not the worst damage, okay? And then again, coming at OB6, you'll notice the magic attack decrease never goes past mid for a single cast, but it does start to stack at high or too high once you get to OB6. And just, just so you can see, even at OB10, uh, it never goes higher than mid potency on a single cast. Um, to, I guess, critique this added ability, I would say this. I don't know that you're ever gonna wanna cast this twice to get it up to high potency but I don't think that that's necessary because the fact that it stacks to high means you could even start the first, you know, one tick down with a materia or, you know, somebody else right in the group can, you know, can get one tick down and then you cast this, you're getting to high potency anyway. Okay. Now the extension is only 10 seconds. So, you know, the, the only downside of using a materia rather than this first is you're going to lose out on some duration. But I mean, this, I think makes this a really, really solid utility weapon. Being able to get a debuff plus a big buff on your person means that you don't really have to sacrifice her ability to deal damage and also be able to get a debuff in. I mean, very, very rare are we trying to make, you know, or very awkward sometimes for certain accounts to get your main uh, damage dealer also able to get in a debuff. So at the end of the day, this is just packed with utility. Do I think it's worth picking it up again? Uh, if you didn't have it, pulling on this banner just for this? Maybe, <laughs> maybe. It's hard to say, especially because it's not the only featured weapon. It's not just one of two featured weapons. It's one of three. That makes it like, again, a little bit harder to obtain. And 
you can't you can't just pick this up on a wish list, right? This is the first time since this event came out, and it's been quite a while, I can tell you. I would say well over, I want to say over eight months, something like that. I think this came out in like October, or not October, in like November, like late November maybe, somewhere in there. So it's been a while, I can tell you that. It's been quite a while since we originally got these, and this is the first time they've come back around. So wherever you get to, I imagine you might be there for a while, unless they change the scheduling and rotation of banners. For that reason, you know, honestly, I don't like it nearly as much if it's not OB6. This is my personal opinion. The reason is, and I've done some testing on this in the past with uh, things like Aonibi, if you're trying to use it to buff your own attack, mid potency is likely for 4 ATB going to be a net loss in DPS over using just another attack in place of this, right? Because to use this, you still have to use 4 ATB before you're going to do your main attacks afterwards. However, like with things like Kimura Wand, that makes this even less relevant if you have it. So we're really focusing on the fact that it can also do a magic attack decrease, which I think is really good. And I think it's really good because, you know, the more the content is shifting and getting a little bit trickier here and there, uh, it's nice if you could have one person on your team doing physical debuff and maybe a buff for your team, right? And then another person doing another kind of buff and healing or something like that. But then what if you also need magic decrease? I mean, it's pretty nice to just have it on one weapon with your main DPS or whatever role you got on Tifa. I think that's pretty nice and that makes it a tough decision for me. However, I guess it depends whether or not you want it for the physical attack increase. If you think that's necessary, I really, I really like it at OB6. Um, I, man, it would be hard for me to let a bunch of crystals go to try to OB6 a weapon like this on this banner with two other featured weapons right before the anniversary. So, depending where your account's at, I would say the weaker your account or the newer player you are, the more worth it it's gonna be to try to even just get a copy, right? Just to kind of enable some people or, you know, be able to split roles because that's become more and more of a thing where you have like a hybrid utility DPSer. I like that. Um, it's hard. Ultimately, I'm obviously not pulling. I've got these weapons. I mean, I've got Tifa's where I want them at OB6. Zidane's sword, I just kind of gave up on because, you know, I, I had no choice but to only use Cloud's uh, weapon parts to get it up. And it's still, I think it may be OB3 or 4 for me. So I'm not pulling on this. Uh, I'm almost to my 30,000 mark before anniversary, which I think I'm going to be probably way higher than that by the time it actually comes. Uh, maybe as high as, I don't know, 40,000 with all the stuff that they're starting to throw out reward wise. But I don't know. I just don't think it's good. I think these, I think Tifa's weapon specifically got way better. Uh, I think that the outfits being better is, is awesome. However, you know, if for example, you have, you know, uh, Tifa's mastery um, outfit, the cowgirl one, you know, that's just, when that came along, I think it was just mostly better uh, than, you know, and this is what I'm looking at, an extra 15% instead of adding to the regular R ability. I think this, if you're going for pure DPS, this is hands down better than um, the Amaranth guys, right? But 15 HP, if you're going for survivability, which sometimes we are, that may also make it different, right? Because the other one has physical attack uh, and no HP. And 15, uh, that's that's quite a bit. So you really have to think, I think, think this one through. The good part is it ends September 6th. So there's about 20 days from now that you can make this decision. I'm really curious to see what people are gonna go for. I think, I think if you're Zach main, it really makes a lot of sense to at least try to pick up a couple of his weapons. Um, like I said, get it to uh, like OB1 probably. If not though, Maybe a skip for many people. However, I do see some value still in this, way more than I saw in the last, um, the rerun that they did before the uh, six month anniversary rerun. So those are my thoughts. Let me know what you're gonna be doing and, and offer some thoughts. I always learn something from at least a handful of your comments and, and 
I appreciate that very much. Subscribe for future content if you're not already. If you are, I appreciate each and every one of your support. And as always, thanks for watching.